What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are watching, you are listening to the Complex Sneakers Podcast. I'm with my man, Mr. Matt Welty. Just the three of us. Again, we're back, home game, and Mr. Brendan Dunn. Welty, I'm, we were talking about samples a little bit earlier before this conversation. I'm worried we can't clear that sample that you just... Are we going to get a YouTube content <laughs> strike? <laughs> well, they're going to take Especially in the first 15 seconds, they yeah, might not, not monetize it. So. Yeah, we might, have to, we might have to bleep that out. How we feeling? How's everything? It's the Tuesday after Memorial Day. How was the weekend? I want to know. Wealthy, he did the Murph. Yeah. I did you to, do the Murph? I saw did. Gerald. I saw Joe Flores stories. did the Murph. We, we, did you yeah. do it with him? We need to no, up he on did this it at from he, last week. He did it in at a, at another place. I had to scale it, admittedly. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So what's the original Murph? The original Murph is one mile run, one hundred pull ups, two hundred push ups. 300 air squats, one that's mile lot. run. Okay, he and, said that's a lot before and, he was even and done. And if you like really do it like boss status, you do it with a 20 pound weight vest on. That's a lot. See, I carried my niece two blocks and I thought that was my Murph challenge, but it's a lot but different. I ended up doing one mile run, 50 pull ups, 100 push ups, 150 air squats, one mile run. Had like a little like wrist issue. As you guys remember, I like broke my arm. A okay. few years yes. ago. Something's yes. wrong with the flick of the wrist right now? Yeah. When it rains, it's like, you know, how you feel <laughs> you it a little bit. You feel it in your old bones. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, I was just happy to able to, like, get out there and do it. So, Gerald Flores. Matt Halfhill. And Matt Halfhill. So, I have to ask, is the Murph Challenge the official challenge of sneaker journalism? <laughs> The, the official fitness challenge of sneaker, <laughs> sneaker journalism? I think it should be the official fitness challenge of everyone. But. Okay. So, Joe, I, Joe, did you complete your, because we had talked last week about us each doing a half of it. Oh, I didn't know that was serious. There were so, no, so many people who DM me when they were like, hey, uh, did Brendan and Joe do it with you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. People are following. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, th- lo- those people will now know, the general public will now know that, um, in fact... Did not finish, did not start. Okay. <laughs> I had a lot of pasta this weekend. That's, uh, that's so did I. I had, I had challenge. pasta last night, bolognese. I actually showed you the picture. I didn't show you. We'll, we'll drop the picture in. It looked yeah. beautiful. I'm not, not invited to these. Uh... No, it wasn't that. No, no, we no, didn't no, have it no. together. Yeah, we, yeah. It we was... didn't have it together, but I told him it was a good weekend, and uh, we were talking about some Italian restaurants before you came to the office, and I said, uh, yeah, Mom made some nice bolognese last night, and yeah. I had like four servings of it. A1. Plenty of gravy? Plenty of gravy. <laughs> the bolognese on the side. When you have the bolognese on the side and the spicy sausage, come on. <laughs> Just remember one. to brown the sausage. Yes. Or fry it. Yes. Wait, you were cooking Italian food as well? No, no, no. I was, was eating. Cooking. I was eating it. I was okay. eating it. Where'd um, you eat? Uh, I was at Bomante's oh, in, in right. Williamsburg. Um, I had some kiki spaghetti, which I, t- I don't want to keep revisiting the same dishes on here, even if I revisit them endlessly in my life as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ended up going to, once again, to a Portuguese clubhouse, but for the first time, went to Red Bull Arena oh. this season, got into the stadium. Can we talk about your rainy? status at the stadium oh, yeah. publicly? I, I mean, sure, why not? Are you, uh, you're allowed in? I don't know, but I go in. Okay, and nobody, do you, when you go into the stadium, because you had been banned previously. Yeah, but that's like another, like, that's like an old phase of the life. Of course, of course. Turn, turn a new leaf. Absolutely. But when you go in, do you have to, are you worried at all or you just, no. you just walk right in? Yeah. And also like, you know, at a, at a, at a, at a spot where like, uh, I'm not worried about revisiting old tropes in my past. Right. So. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Did, did they win? <laughs> yes, they won two to one and it rained. Right. Uh huh. Then we went back to the Portuguese clubhouse and had our own cookout with the big, Charcoal grill. Um, Were you working the grill? A little bit, yeah. Are you a good grill master? I think I'm all right. Did you have a, like a, a novelty T-shirt to go with it? No, sorry. Kiss the chef or something? No, but a group of friends wanted me to hang out afterwards, and I'm like, dude, I smell <laughs> like like the, kebab. Like, yeah. Well, we were cooking like sausages and whatnot, but yeah. So you you skipped the hangout. Um, well. Hope you didn't miss out on too many good times. I, I was at the theater this weekend. Were you? Yeah, I went what? back to a movie theater. Oh, I thought you were going to say you went to, like, the theater. No, 
No. We, we <laughs> do. Our, our office is located Broadway. right next to the theater district. True. Yeah, we're we're right here. Um, Hamilton's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter's a writer. Well, let me not let me not say too much. You people, basically just dropped the thing. People yeah. don't need to know exactly where we are. But yeah. no, you know the funny thing is the theater is one of those experiences um, people have been waiting to get back to. But then once you go in there and you're around other people again, you're like people just don't know how to fucking act. Why? I, I don't know. Just somebody on their phone or somebody reclining too much and things like that. And you're like, this is really what I missed. <laughs> this is what I was pining for. Wait, what movie did you see? Uh, Minari. I don't know what that is. <laughs> good one? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm glad, glad to be caught up on that. Speaking of dropping a pin, Brendan had his uh, worst fears revealed today outside of the office. What happened? You didn't see what was outside? Oh. <laughs> the, the rat? <laughs> the big rat? The, yeah. rat? the rat The rat. heard about my story and came to visit us. <laughs> yeah, but that was here last the, week. Yeah, the inflatable labor rat. Uh, yeah. you, you know something's going on when there's a giant inflatable labor rat outside of your building. Um, not a great feeling, although I think they already trucked it away, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it has to do with some property issues or something like that. Uh, listen, whatever whatever the local union is looking for, I support them in it. They, they have my full support. <laughs> I was like, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we, <laughs> we're, we're, you never know where he's going to go. <laughs> what, what rat hole is this one going down? Hey, there we go. Welty, can we talk about your sneakers today? Because I don't yeah, think these wow. sneakers are out yet. We're recording this on a different? Tuesday, June uh, 1st. These come out the 11th. Okay. I believe. A Thank, full 10 days. Thanks to the good Team Early. folks at Concepts. Shout out Dion and Annie mm -hmm. for the shoes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Story that should be up on complex.com by mm -hmm. the time this is out. It's a sushi shoe, is that right? Yeah. Am I understanding it correctly? Otoro. Okay. Yeah. Are you um, a fan of eating that? I like sushi. I don't eat it as, as much. I always feel like it's like a date food, you know, where it's like I don't really go out like on my own to eat it where I'm not like, oh, it's just Tuesday, I'm gonna yeah. go do it. It is but Tuesday, do you wanna go? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we can have a, we can have a date next door at the sushi place. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're dropping all the pins, people are yeah, gonna be able gonna, to triangulate our exact location. When's the last time you wore a Gel Light 3? It's it been has a minute, been I'm a sure. Long time, actually, you know what, Brendan, I did wear a Gel Light 3 last year. Oh yes. Thanks to our good friends at Sneaker Law who did yes. a collaboration. The, the folks in Malaysia, Joe. Yes. Okay. Um, but so how much have you heard about the Malaysia trip? Uh, you guys keep me in the dark with that one. I haven't seen any footage. I've only, I know as much as the There's audience. a documentary coming out. That's what I heard so, from you guys. Um, we might need you as like a talking head in there or something. Uh, yeah. Definitely. But it, it, does, definitely. it does feel good that there is a good pair of Gel Light 3s out and about again. So Yeah, Gel Light 3's been quiet lately. Is the sneaker game better when the Gel Light 3 <laughs> is back a little bit? I mean, I think so because I think it adds more diversity to it when you see the stuff that Asics is doing really. Like, it's not like it's not like the dunk coming back, but there was no. definitely a moment when Gel Light threes were very popular. Yeah. There was a moment where you went into Foot Locker and there was ten Gel Light threes. That was I love one, that. Yes. a lot of good inline yeah. colorways. I still have random Gel Light threes that I bought back then. You know, obviously the collabs were a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Ronnie Fye yep. and, and and other people doing special versions of the sneaker. But also, I thought the inline offerings were quite good. I remember one of my favorites from that time, and I can't remember if we've discussed it on here before. Well, do you know the pair I'm talking about? The Caviar Asics Gel Light Three. Yes. The black and red pair um, that that was really hard to find in the U.S. for a second. And if anybody remembers when you bought them, they actually smelled like fish for some reason. Some weird production okay. issue. Yeah. I remember I bought those the original time, and then. I think Ronnie did get an extra run of them uh, maybe a year and a half later and brought them out with the rope laces. So I think I still have both. And your blue and gray pair that you love buying. Oh, right? yes. <laughs> Wait, what is that? His most regrettable purchase. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was it Gel Light 3? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was forget. a really random one. Uh, yeah, the A6 Days. Shout out Colin Brickley. Yes. Yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> I talked to him recently. Yeah. Yeah. Real OG in the game. Definitely. I, I remember there. being at a... A Life party when A Life did that like marathon A6 pack. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they had a party. I like those shoes a lot. And they had a party in the backyard. And Colin, who was, or I don't know what his current title is, but mm -hmm. was like the boss man mm -hmm. at A6 at the time, rolls Overall, up. Over all the like lifestyle and retro yeah. product, yep. right? Rolls up with a Concepts Canada Goose like reflective jacket on in a pair of Bape Asics that hadn't come out. The, the green camel pair with the pink. Yeah. Soul on it, the Kayanos. That's, yeah. I totally yeah. He sent those to me. But he just rolls up in that fit, and it's almost like the room stop for this guy to come in. The Kayano <laughs> was the cross country shoe really? for me in high school. Like, all the, all the top runners trained in the A6 Gel Kayano. I had no idea that you had this A6 history. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, if only you knew somebody who knew some people at A6. I have a lot of Gel Kayanos. 
And so Colin tell Ronnie has, to set it up. Uh, Colin sends me. I know, but we need a, what do you we want? Need a shoe. I'm not oh, what, shoe. what I want, what the people want, Joe. A shoe. Like you a, want a your Joe own collab. La- you. You guys want to oh, oh, You guys want to talk about legendary Joe LaPuma Asics moments real quick? What no, is, don't. No, what is what, it? The, yes, the we cove? can. What yes, the cove. Yeah. Joe LaPuma that picture's modeling. Not, if, you got, if you guys just. That picture exists. But that picture is not going in this episode, <laughs> we're gonna, so don't even think about it. We're just going to put it right no, here. Shout no. out Zach. You're not um, proud of that moment? You modeling the Ronnie Feig A6 Joe Light 3, the Cove? That's a piece of history. It's not that I'm not proud of it. It's just... It you would have done the fit differently looking back? I think it was jean shorts. It I, was a Goodwood beaded <laughs> necklace. I think you're... you're, la- you're and it was, a bape, it was a bape camo hat. You're sitting on like a, wrong with the that. rocks like outside of the pool. That was someone's backyard who we knew. Yeah. Your legs are like dangling. And Phil from Madbury Club was in there. Yeah. And you regret it. Oh, you know who also was it was there that day? Rudy Calderon of Yao Ming fame. Yes, Yao Ming of Yao Ming getting yeah. stolen from yeah, yeah, the yeah. finish line fame. But, Zach, I'm looking in the camera. You're not putting that picture in. You guys could find the picture if you want. Zach, you're not putting it in. <laughs> we're definitely putting that in. Man, there were, there were some fun ASICs parties back in the day. You remember the ASICs... Um, I don't know if it was a collab or not. That Volt pair with the Gore-Tex. I that remember was a, I think it was Ubik. Ubik, right. Yes. In yes. Williamsburg, right? The party was. I remember eating so many miniature hot dogs at that event. Miniature and I think oh, hot dogs. That, was, that was like the craziest A6 party ever because they invited like all the industry people. People yeah, to it yeah, yeah. well. It wasn't just like the sneaker media people. Like I remember, like Ronnie was there. Somebody told me they saw Big Body Best going yeah. through the coat check, looking really? at people's yeah. pockets. What year was that? <laughs> this was like 2015. Wow. Uh, Action oh, Bronson. Yeah. Was there uh, first time I ever met Dre Croatian style was mm-hmm. at that event. You know, did you, was, did you guys have a long night afterward? Am I remembering that correctly? Maybe, maybe I'm maybe, sure. <laughs> plead, the fi- plead the fifth on that one. Uh, I think Dre was at Poppy last night. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was uh, one for the ages. Fun times, yeah. Oh, I think it was was it Mason Plumley, the basketball player, yeah, yeah. was there, and there was like a rumor like they were like, yeah, he's gonna get his own A6 signature basketball shoe. Was he they, on the Nets? I'm not sure. Uh, You're the lifelong Nets fan. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> I just wanted to say that to say that my Nets are playing tonight. You're, you're, are you going to the game? After last week's uh, attendance, are you like, do you get in now? I'm not sure. No, there's, there's no information in my inbox just yet about whether or not I'll How be at the, the food? Nets game. And it's, it was good. What would you have? Um, they have the Little Fella, which is a miniature Junior's Cheesecake. Okay. Um, Went right to dessert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nets game last week. This was game two. I had some gourmet popcorn. Uh, How gourmet was it? Um, <laughs> you know, three flavors mixed in. Like you salt bay just Chicago comes with the, the with the salt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> over the popcorn. Okay. Um, a, a, sh- a shrimp roll. Oh, nice. A few a few tater tots and things like that. Yeah, it was a good time. And my Nets won. So yes, you did. Uh, I was gonna follow up. Who do you think who had the like performance of the night, and who do you think did the fundamentals the best? For, for the for game two? Yeah, no, the game you went to. Who do you think? Yeah, that was. Um, may not have showed up in the box score, but did everything right. The fundamentals. Who who really stood out to you? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like. I feel like more than anything, who really shined that night was James Harden. Okay. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Oh, okay. Yeah, more than anything, those were kind of you know we kind of call them the big three. Got it. Yeah, so they really did their thing. It's an interesting time in New York. The Nets are Ascendant. progressing, Ascendant. ascending, and the Knicks are having a tough time. Well, I mean, man. all the Knicks fans outside of the Garden after they won one game. Um, what, it was an exciting time in the city. It was exciting to see Madison Square Garden back. You, what, you were, you were, were hesitant to celebrate a little bit? I mean, you won not, a game. Not a, not a Knicks fan on any level. Yeah, what, no. what basketball fan are you? Uh, not really NBA guy. Celtics? Okay. Little Did it hurt you when Kyrie stepped on the logo? <laughs> no, that, no, not at all. <laughs> no. Um, but, no, not really just... Okay. Were you ever a Nets guy growing up? Because you, you're from Jersey. Uh, like I mean, a, like I, a little bit. Yeah. Like, but not, like, to me, it was just... I was ne- just never a huge, just, like, diehard basketball fan. Yeah, I can't relate because I've, of course, always been a diehard Nets fan. Exactly. And were you ever a uh, big enough fan to wear a full Knicks uniform? Or... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The slow because roll. I, I, the I, slow could, roll is I, insane. I consider myself f- a fairly big basketball <laughs> fan. Did I ever put on a full Knicks uniform? No. But <laughs> oh, oh, I that actually we have done that on multiple occasions. <laughs> Set up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And both of those occasions I've been there. Whenever Wealthy's yes. in a full Knicks uniform, I'm there in the same uniform. Yeah. <sighs> wow, I didn't I didn't know we were going there, but it's one it's one thing we glossed over that I want to bring it back to that bubbled on Twitter 
uh, a second. You mentioned the Goodwood chains. Yes. I think uh, Andrew Barber, Fake Shore Drive, had posted something about G-Shocks coming back because of Cuddy's iced out uh, yes. G-Shock. And then I forget who said it, but someone was like, oh, you need to bring um, Goodwood chains back and then you know, I gotta look in the contract. I don't think it, I don't think I have a retroactive contract with that. There, so. there, there was a talk about it, and I think the the funny part was then uh, Ben Baller jumped in the mix and was like, "We don't need to bring Goodwood chains back. We need to do these uh, plastic Jesus he pieces." He always was supposed to do them though. What is ben, that? Ben Baller was supposed to. So around the same time, and Ben Baller will will correct me if I'm wrong, but mm-hmm. around the same time that Kanye was wearing the Jesus pieces and the Goodwood Jesus pieces Mm -hmm. were coming out. Ben Baller had plans to work with Kanye on a... Plastic. Plastic one, a more affordable one. But they were all... It it looked like really well done. They looked kind of like they were like pow chain colored. Uh, It was like a, there was like a neon yellow one, blue, red, stuff like that. I gotta say, um, that whole era is one of those ones where I never bought any of that stuff and I'm so proud to have have never really Wait, do do you still have the... Goodwood? The Goodwood change in the tuck? I do. I have one that I wore. <laughs> Polished. I have, wo- I have one that I wore, actually. Did I'll you ever have you. to tuck your Goodwood chain? No. At, like, a life backyard party or something? <laughs> I ne- no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Did you... But to, that, was- to that... Pre- to, to your last statement, though, I remember visiting Chicago. Mm-hmm. I think it was for Lollapalooza, a branded content event that I was doing yeah. for Complex. And it was, like, my first time in Chicago. I went to RSVP Gallery. Yeah. And... You just said, like, you're happy that you never bought any of that stuff. I definitely thought about buying the POW chain. I couldn't How afford it. How expensive were they? They were back? expensive. Really? I, I think they were expensive, and I remember... What were they made of? I think it was gold-plated. Okay. But it was like those... Chi- yeah, those yeah, yeah. chains, and yeah. RSVP Gallery had Big them. Sean was, was the Big Sean, on them, right? Big yeah. Sean had them, and I remember, like, holding it and being like, oh, should I buy it? I like, can't really afford it. And then I went to get like a Chicago style hot dog mm-hmm. and just thought about it the whole lunch. Like, do I need this? Do I need this? And I didn't end up buying it. But yeah, different era. Right what, do you, what do you like more? Uh, Chicago style hot dog or the Italian beef sandwich? Oh, tough. Got to ride with the countrymen, right? Uh, you know, it's really, I don't want to admit it. I get both when I like. Yeah. Like when I go to Portillo's, <laughs> I get both. Do you just stuff one inside of the other. No, and just I don't. But dip I, it get in the jus? I get both. I get both. Like Complex Con Chicago. Yeah. I took people there. Where was I? You weren't. I don't think you ate with us. Hmm. You didn't, right? No. But no invite. I definitely got a Italian beef sandwich, and I think I got a Chicago hot dog, which is listen. And then you try to host a panel, and you're a little out of it. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a big meal, but. Yeah, high off the dip. No, but the back to the G shocks. Pigeons and Planes did, that was off the tweet, I think, that Pigeons and, okay. and Planes did. But what they forgot was the Kanye cover when he's in the shiny suit and he had the pink G-Shock. Yes. And from what I remember, Kanye wearing the pink G-Shock on the Complex cover, like, set, set it, it off, off. crazy. Mm. And it wasn't included in that tweet, but I just remember. That was big on the mood board. No, it wasn't. Just for G-Shocks, it, like, right. took off right. after that. And yeah, he wore it. And then Cuddy wore a G-Shock on the first cover. Yeah. Uh, there was a collab. I forget what it was. I always it, wanted the information one. That oh, was information that's what it was. Were amazing. Yeah. But the Cuddy G-Shock, I believe. Oh. The, I had the black and gold. I have the oh, new one that he just awesome. iced out. But the information one was the best one. But yes. here's like what is funny. Like the turquoise or purple or whatever it was. What I remember is that the color correction on the cover it was the information one, yeah. and it changed the color. So it like a looked... a chameleon on the wrist. Yeah, like it just looked like a, a special edition, but it was actually just like in post. You know what? I, I don't think I'm going to go back to any of that stuff, but after we had Hayes on the podcast recently, I was looking, and I found the a brand new Hayes G-Shock from what is it, one 1999 of the best. or 2001, and I was quite tempted. I think it was on Grail for maybe $400, and I was, I was thinking about it for a second there. But Cuddy icing out his new Bape G-Shock, Ben Baller, takes you back a little bit. Absolutely. If you wanted that, remember? The LRG, the LRG one, white and green, was another great one. Did you have it? I did have it. The real thing we need to know, Joe, did oh. you have a dead serious hoodie? The skeleton? Yeah. No. But, nope. How is that possible? I didn't. I had the crew one. And if, yeah. hopefully, we could, foreshadowing, I had the crew all over print one that I think I Terry, one Kennedy, Terry Kennedy was in the ad 
I'll find the photo. But I remember, did I ever tell the story? I was writing for Hypebeast at the time. Please. I think I was writing for Hypebeast and Internal about Complex. This. Yeah. And I posted on the crew hoodies. And they were this all over, yeah, you full did. zip yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And you got I, one in the mail? I got three. Like three of them like from king. crew. You felt like a king. It was like the best package I've ever this received. This is the one that Just was like, like, it was like black. And then the crew was like pink, ye- and yellow. Blue. Yeah, yeah. So loud. And it was like peak all over print hoodies. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the like second or third all zip up hoodies. Yeah. They got sent to my parents' house. And I wore them nonstop, and I just remember thinking... You put like, all three on, it was? Uh, no, but I wore them, like, uh, one day I would wear the yeah. white and pink Rotate one, and the black, out, yeah. and I remember, like, going into skate shops and seeing them, and being like, oh, I got these for free, and they're, like, selling them <laughs> for $150, or, or whatever it was, and I was I like, gotta say, I made it. I, gotta, I have to admit, that is a huge sneaker snob moment that I fall victim to all the time, of seeing somebody with a pair of shoes on and being like, yeah, but... Oh wow! But I got those for free. Not, not only in my head, only in okay. my head. And I'm not saying I'm not proud of that. I'm I'm, be, I'm being vulnerable right now. You know what I mean? It's it like slips out when you're like, oh man, look, and you're like, yeah, those are at home. <laughs> I'm really disappointed that there's no picture lying around of Joe Lapuma with a dead serious. D- there isn't. I never had that hoodie. Ma- like imagine that fit like dead serious hoodie. I couldn't afford those. Good Goodwood chain. No. It Supreme was never... Supreme box what, what logo underneath. I'm trying to think. Maybe like Black a, fours. Like a I'm trying to crackle think like, print hat or something like that. <laughs> I didn't have that many of those fits, you know? No. No, but like, you know, I had like loud fits for sure. But like, I always tried either the shoes were loud or mm-hmm. the hoodie was loud, but not both. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. Remember there's the, there's the picture of Kanye with the red one on, right? Iconic. Yeah. yeah. Iconic. Yeah. And the sunglasses. Yeah. yeah. That was a moment. It was a moment. But yeah, that crew hoodie. Speaking of the era... We have a giveaway this week with a shoe that was perfectly at home in that era. 2008. Now listen, you guys know this is Busy P. Busy P. Jesse Leva, last week's guest, worked on that sneaker. Absolutely. Go check that episode out if you didn't get to it the past holiday weekend. Busy P. 2008. These released only at Colette. I was chasing these for so long. In the summer, I finally bit the bullet and got a pair. We are giving these away. This is a really special pair of Air Force Ones. Yeah. And for this to happen in 2008, and I feel like, I'm not sure if everyone knows the history of it, but Busy P, who was connected to Ed Banger Records. Yeah. And I think there was like a Mr. Cartoon, wasn't there like a Mr. Cartoon one that looked like this a little bit? In that same One World series? Because I well, think this was part of the One World series, is that right? Yeah, but yes. there was also... There was also a uh, the Lance Armstrong yeah. Yeah. version of this. Yeah. So maybe that's in what I'm black, thinking about. In, but the shoe came in black and yellow, and I think the Mr. Cartoon was also part of okay. that Lance Armstrong Live Strong pack. So they may have, the one with the spider webs all over it. Yeah. Got it. Such great detailing. Just like the Daft Punk connection with Busy P, who managed them for a little bit. And one lucky listener is getting this. And they submitted a question done. What was the question? Yeah, so this is Pascal Madrigal from Chicago, Illinois for our eBay sneaker giveaway of the week asking which hyped shoe you would never wear. <sighs> and, and, and before, I, I always want to give this PSA. I always want to give this disclaimer okay. and explain to people how this actually works. So each week on the show, we're giving away crazy hype, grail level sneakers. I, I think I'm comfortable calling some of these things grails yes. for yes. some people. Mm-hmm. How it works is if we select your question that you submitted and, and we ask it here on the show to, to ourselves, our co-hosts, then you will get that pair of sneakers. And how you enter is on Friday afternoons from the Complex Sneakers account, mm-hmm. we'll tweet out a call for the question. So please give us your question submissions there, not in the YouTube comments, not on the podcast comments. And, and please make it an interesting question, like what your favorite shoe is or, yeah. or your top three shoes or something like that. We're never going to pick that stuff. So we, we want to have interesting conversation on here. So yeah. Pasquale, you're getting this pair of Busy P Air Force Ones. And the question for us this week is, which hyped shoe would you never wear? I have one. Okay. I have one. Wealthy has. <laughs> Wealthy Do you has have a lot? Many, no. I'm sure. No, I mean, I'm sure and there's, it has there's to be a in lot. your collection, right? Or not necessarily? No, no, no. no. I think Cause... just in general. Okay, so the one in my collection that... I probably wouldn't wear is the Khaled 3 he gave me. Okay. It's the Another One 3s. Okay. And I hosted an event for Khaled to unveil them. Yeah. Uh, Mark Wahlberg was there. 
And you got to meet Mark Wahlberg? I did get to meet Mark Wahlberg. What was Wahlberg. it like? It was great. I want him on Sneaker Shop, and we're still trying. Mark, please. I know he's probably shooting a movie, but if you could fit us in. 10-4. <laughs> but the, in 2018, hosted an event for Khaled. I flew out to L.A., and... Yeah, it just unveiled the shoes, and it was the suede blue one and the leather blue one. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't leave with the shoes or anything. I didn't ask for them. And then a couple weeks later, they showed up. Unannounced? Unexpected? They showed up to this office in a gold chest. Yes. A gold That's chest. Right. A big one, right? Yes. It's yes. like this Another big, right, one. Joe? Is, yes. this the, is this the chest I'm thinking of? Yeah, yeah like yeah, we yeah. filmed it for Life yeah. at Complex. Yeah. And then in the middle... Opened it was a Jordan box. Opened it and it was the Khaled threes, the leather blue ones, which is a super rare pair. And I think we talk a lot about the sentimental kind of sneakers that we have in our collection. Mm -hmm. Again, it was 2018, so it was pretty recent. But like the event and working with Khaled over the years on some episodes and it yeah. just being a rare pair, it would have to be a very very special occasion or episode to bring those out. Why are you smiling? <laughs> because. All right, I, I love the story. Okay, but like that's like the turning it to a positive answer. I want to hear about a hype shoe where you're like, I'll never put those fucking things on my feet. Why? Because you regret it? No, where you're like that. Not something this you own. This is Welty's mindset. Not oh, something wait you a minute. Own. Hold on, is that how you took it? I was taking it more like Welty. Oh, I didn't. I didn't take it like he that at all. He flex real quick. Yeah. I no, thought no, it was, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. It wasn't about that. I thought like a super hype shoe that I would that I would protect and never That's wear. That's fair. But is there something more along something the Something that everyone oh. thinks is like the biggest shoe ever where you're like, I never wear those. Uh, and no disrespect to any collaborator or designer, of course. Oh, man. Uh, you guys go and then I'll come back. I'll, I'll think of one. Welty? Uh, this one's very simple. But I it's not in your collection, too, so it can no, be anything. No, this one's uh, pretty simple. I'm, I mean, there's a lot that I could list, you know, where it's yeah. like, you know, it's no disrespect to the shoe, and I know they're big. Like, I would never wear Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s. Yeah. Not because I, okay. like, hate the shoes. I just, I'd feel weird wearing them, you yeah, know? Yeah, because you're not a Travis Scott fan. Not a huge Travis yeah. Scott fan, so hyped, and then, you know, you just feel kind of like a poser walking around in it. But one shoe that has a lot of hype or resale value on it that I don't think should, and I'll never put those oh, things boy. on my feet. Okay. <laughs> he was waiting for this. Yeah, okay. he wanted the I'll soapbox. never put these things on my okay. feet. And everyone Step out up there, on that soapbox and everyone and out off, there who wow. puts these on their feet, who was around back in the era, you're dead wait, wrong wait, wait, for wait, doing wait, wait. this. Can we guess? Are you talking like Y3 Casas or something? What, no. Where, where are we going with this? Is it a deeper thing? It's further back than that. Where are we going with this? It's a shoe of the era of dead serious hoodies and stuff like that. Creative recreation? I'm no. Not like, no. Go. Any of the three bears, Nike SBs. Oh, oh yeah, wow. Yeah, that's yeah. a hot take, though. <laughs> no, that's a big, that's a big um, People contentious are going... shoe for wealthy. Yes, anytime, it is a contentious shoe. Anytime but... he sees somebody with the three bears SBs, he's like, but those were, shoes were, were not really outside. Oh, People man, did not like go. those shoes when they came out. They you sat the floor. on they sat on shelves. Everyone else who was around back then said the same thing. Um, yeah. People are buying those though. Yeah, of course. And, and like it's popping up a little. You do not like that shoe. <laughs> no. And real quick, just small aside, I just want to say because we were talking about that era, talking about Ed Banger records. I'd be remiss if we did not mention Justice as the ultimate group okay, from okay. Ed Banger, Wale. Yes. Wale Dance over Justice Dance. Great love. If you guys jack. haven't heard that song before, please go look it up and listen to it. Justice always had the great leather jackets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say we'd be remiss not to mention, insert um, local sneaker reseller here, but maybe we're going to get through this episode no. without mentioning nope. that sneaker nope. reseller. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say for me, I think one hype sneaker that I would never wear is the Yeezy 350 V2. I right now maybe could yeah. I just it's just like I I I like the shoe and I appreciate where they've taken it and, and how kind of mass it is at this point. Maybe it's not even a hype sneaker that it's like much anymore. Like ubiquitous at this point, kind of. Yeah, you know, it's it's basically like a Jordan One for for younger people these days. But I just and I, I like the shoe fine, but I just wouldn't. Would wear never it. wear it. Yeah, and I think I've had a few pairs over the years. I think I gave one to my nephew, you know, which, uh, you know, I think have gone up quite a bit in value since then. Yeah. But that's okay. I, I hope he's enjoying it. It's almost, almost <laughs> kind of like the iPhone of shoes. I know we were, like, talking about this 
before because like Kanye is so obsessed with that whole like Apple model mm. but it's like he's taken this one shoe and just slightly changed yeah, it like yeah. an iPhone over the time and re-released it like oh, in a is that shoe ever going away you see no the other way. thing too is like I, I feel like I could maybe wear the original Yeezy 350 because I was a little bit more into it at that time I think I had a couple pair of t turtle doves that I sold mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I always yeah. wanted the Moon Rock pair, but I, I, even those, I, I don't know if I would ever actually wear them. I have a bunch of them, and I wore the Turtle Doves, the Pirate Black ones. Yeah. I don't know if I would wear them now. Is that your pick, or have you been thinking, no, is there something else that's a, like a better? I don't have a pick. I, I just... You have, to ha you have to have a pick. All right, so I'll, I have to think about it then. Off white? No, to be honest, I wouldn't wear the Dior ones. Okay. No? Why not? Because it's so white? It just, maybe it has to do with like... You not liking white The sneakers? Dior ones for me, and this is no disrespect, it's just, like you guys know, shoes always grow on me. Yes. A lot. Like, if I see it once or twice, I'm like, oh, I think I'm good. If I see it eight to ten times, it starts turning. It starts turning. The Supreme Dunks is a perfect example. I ended up buying them. This last pair? The last pair, the black and white, because I saw them on, like, for a month. What was that price tag like? Not, not... It was, it was a good amount, honestly. But it grew on me, right? Yeah. And when I first saw them, it's like, oh, I'm not going to have a chance to get these. And it's, uh, I'm not that into them. Yeah. But, like, the blue and white ones, the black and white ones grew on me. And I ended up buying them. The Dior ones, I still look at and... Doesn't do anything for you? No, doesn't. Like, didn't even... Not that I would call in favors or anything, but not even, like, an ounce of... Is there any way to figure out how to try to get them? Or like, man, these are really growing on me. Or, yeah. oh, even for the collection, I wish I had them. They, it's just not something that I think yeah. maybe the white, everyone knows that I don't wear white sneakers a lot, but it is a shoe that just, it, it, it's, I get why a lot of people and, love it. And I get, it's super, super hyped. Mm -hmm. It's super rare. Just doesn't do anything for me. So that would be my pick. Okay. I also feel like that shoe um, is, you talk about like calling in favors. I feel like that shoe is like the the great humbler of a lot of people. Yeah, I'm like you can't you yeah, can't get this because remember there was the whole uh, I guess it was Jokey at some point, but Robert Pattison he had them on had them on he, he was early. One of the first people with yes. them, right? But Marcus Jordan was like, oh, this guy has the shoes. Where's my pair or something? <laughs> right, or right, was like right. Some, I don't, yeah, that yeah. was or he maybe, said like I don't even have them yet. Yeah, it was a uh, Batman. Yeah, he is Batman. Robert Pattinson is Batman. Yeah, so that would be my pick, even though, wow, I told the whole Khaled story. You were like, oh, great. <laughs> Literally, cool story, bro. Cool story. <laughs> Literally, cool story, bro, Nate. But, uh, all right, listen. Well, we were trying to get to the real heart all of the right, conversation. So maybe okay. we have to have a pre-production meeting because I missed the whole conceit of the question. But listen. <laughs> I'm glad we got there, and I'm glad Pasquale Madrigal that matters. Chicago is getting great pair. P. Air Force Ones, and if they're not your size, we do apologize, but not that much because you can't sell them on eBay. No seller fees for sneakers over $100. So you broke yours out, right? I wore them. Yeah. Who, wore who'd, them you, who'd you get those shoes from? <laughs> oh, here we go. We know, nope. we're not gonna, you guys nope, know who I got the shoes them. from. We're not going to mention them. We can. Nope. <laughs> okay, Welty says no. He's got to pay for that. Not this week. All right. Congrats, Pasquale. You're getting them. All right, so no guests this week. We're off a holiday weekend. We will be back with a guest next week, but we wanted to chop it up. And I think something topical in sneakers, and there's many ways that this is topical, but mm -hmm. a couple episodes we talked about the dunks. Mm -hmm. Is there too many? Is there not enough? The fragment dunks are coming out this weekend, which I'm, How many pairs, Joe? I'm all in on the fragment you, you dunks. You put in a call for those already? Not yet, but I'm going to soon. Maybe <laughs> after, this, after this podcast, but can't wait for those. And news has finally confirmed. It seems like Virgil and Nike are doing 50 dunks this summer. 50. Wealthy's already upset? It seems like he's upset like, about oh, it. I feel like I got Ajita or whatever. Why? Just to keep up with all the releases? <laughs> no, just hearing like about like the thought of that and just what the future's gonna look like. What too many dunks? I many and dunks. I, I told Dunn, I told Dunn that I already saw people online being like, to me, either it was the black one that leaked or the white mm -hmm. one being like, this is like the best dunk that he's done. So people... I like the black and silver one. I like the white too. and silver one. It's not quite white. Maybe it's off-white. It looks a little bit like the Complex Con Air Force one. Well, it, it's funny because remember when news like kind of first broke of this? I believe it was Pirates, mm -hmm. the leaker, who had posted some of like the Fugazi photoshops about yeah, it. Yeah, mock-ups of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and sometimes those are close. Sometimes they're like a million miles like yeah. away from the epicenter. Um, Virgil replies to him, 
I couldn't design this many bad colorways if I tried. <laughs> okay. Were they the colorways? The, I forget what they okay. exactly looked like, but all right. So I love that Virgil's willing to kind of um, play the have game. a dialogue. Yeah, yeah with play the, the game a little bit when these things happen. But 50 dunks this summer? Do you anyone know? Is it supposed to be this summer? Like, it's June 1st. 50 dunks. What? How, how is? I, I don't know enough yet. We'll know some stuff relatively soon, I think. Do you do you know the way to get JLP sold on the 50 dunks? And Virgil just throwing this out there as a free marketing plan. You create a lookbook, right? Here we go. Where for each of every 50 of these, you have 50 cent unveil the shoes. Oh, wow. Okay. Look at... I th that, that wouldn't, that that wouldn't hook you. That marketing plan was me. Okay. <laughs> that, wealthy. That, wouldn't, that wouldn't hook you in, Joe? Listen, I love 50 cents, so... Uh, yeah. 50x50. 50 50 times, that's Noah's book, 50 times 50, actually. Oh, shout out to Noah yeah, Callahan, Callahan Bever. Bever. I have the program, friend to all of us, always. So let's get into the dunks, and then let's get into Off-White as yeah, a whole. It's I, I want to like talk an, about like the long history yeah, the retrospective you know, of, of Virgil and Nike. At this point, it, it, I guess it's not that long, right? The first of 10 came out in the fall of 2017, and it feels like it's been forever now. It feels and so like so many sneakers since then. So I, th there's so much to talk about. So much has happened, and it's, it's kind of changed the way collaborations work, I think, to an extent. Man, what? First off, looking at the release date and it's saying 2017 I had to like double take it feels like a decade ago yeah it feels like a decade ago that those 10 shoes released but we talked about it a lot on here in the past but those 10 releases this monumental project and him recreating these classics 2017 I mean you can look back and and I'm not what project in the last decade has been that big has there been any with nike that you guys could put i'm sure there's some that i'd be remiss to mention but like N not with nike to me no i don't think anything has been important on that level for nike in terms of our sneakerhead space i mean obviously when you talk about signature shoes mm -hmm. or you know certain types of running models that were very important but I, I don't think anything has been as important to, to to our people as virgil's work yeah i mean i remember like first seeing it you know, and not being like, not casting doubt on it, but not realize, realizing how big the impact yeah. of the projects were going to be. Cause yes. you're just yeah. like, oh, this guy just redid the Chicago one, you know, like. Yeah. And even before that, there were a couple of false starts. So I don't know if you remember yes. in 2015, there was a fake Virgil Abloh Tumblr page and some custom Air Force One popped up on there that was like a, an off-white custom, and it just had like slanted black lines yeah. on it. And some sneaker blogs picked it up and, and said, this is a Virgil Abloh or an off-white Nike Air Force One, and he, he, he shut that down, that was not the case. And then November 2016, I think was a, a, an early look at them, I think on Brocky Marciano's Instagram, he, okay. he showed this on-foot look. And then December 2016, there was that black Air Force One low with the silver swoosh yeah. from yeah. Miami. So, mm -hmm. so it was it was a really like a slow trickle. And then when it finally came, you realize, oh, it's this big thing with 10 shoes involved. Yeah, I remember, and Brennan, you were there as well. And Joe, I don't know if you were involved. And I think we maybe have told this story um, on here before, but like when the shoes first came out, we got like a email from like a Nike PR person being like, um, it's, this isn't snitching. It's just you know, like a lot of people were involved in this. Like they Factual. were like, they were like, hey, you know, pick out your your favorite three from the ten, mm -hmm. and then show up at Twenty One Mercer Nike Lab for, at like this time, and like one of the shoes will be there for you for like early purchase. Like to buy, have, to buy, to yeah, buy, yeah, yeah, to buy. Did it. you get them? Yeah, but wait, I yeah, Did I ended up getting the Prestos. Mm -hmm. I think you got the. I got the Jordan ones. You got the I Jordan got the one. one. Yeah. So I got the one from that. Virgil had an event in the city. Yeah, at, at, at Wall Street, right? The, at Wall Street. All those talks and stuff at 23 Wall Street. That was such a big series. I buy the Jordan one at that thing, that, that yeah. Mercer that you were talking about. Virgil hits me and was like, hey, in the lobby of this hotel, meet. Is that, you, is that where you got the Air JLP? And I got the Air JLP, which is like, the, the Jordan one is amazing. You bought the Presto. Well, I didn't know. I had asked for the Jordan one. Yeah, but here's the thing. And I, and I got big homing on that one. Oh, no, come but on. You got a pair of As crazy as it sounds... <laughs> Yeah, as crazy as it sounds, I think the Presto is the best one of that 10. I know I remember, the Jordan one. I think both of you were aligned on that that year, right? That you felt that the oh, Presto yeah. was I better loved, than the Jordan one. I love that Presto. I wore it literally until there were holes in the toe box. And I remember why I have 
holes in the toe box. There was a kith trip in Aspen. We played basketball. I had no basketball sneakers, and I had to play in the Prestos. I really wanted to play. What, like, what was the stat line yeah, looking like, Yeah, we need like, to know. <laughs> we need to know. Six what were points, the keys to that game? <laughs> six points, four fouls, three turnovers in 12 minutes of play, and I ruined the Prestos probably. But <laughs> Man, it was like Reggie Evans on the court. The, the Prestos, <laughs> that's my favorite one of the 10. The Jordan 1, obviously, what a moment. Him signing it. Like, say what you want about him signing the shoes. Yeah. It was like different was seating. It was, it was a so different cool. seating yeah. rollout. Beyonce, Drake, Spike Lee, was, Michael Jordan. It was awesome. And, I mean. Bella Hadid wearing him on the sneaker shopping yeah, episode. She, creased, she, she did the crease. She and like him? hidden Hidden still posts like the crease of the <laughs> Chicago one. But. You still have the Prestos? No, I actually, after I got them, <laughs> I walked right around the corner to Stadium Goods wow. and dropped them off and sold them for twelve fifty. We Whoa. appreciate your honesty. Okay. Well, Do you still to... have your Jordan 1s, Brendan? No. You don't? No, I've had a lot of off-white Nike projects <sighs> over the years, and I, uh, you know, I've, I've bought pairs for friends and things like that. I've resold a couple of them. Yeah, I mean. So let me ask you, but isn't that Jordan 1 like a moment in history? Yes. But you have no, like, if you uh, don't wear, like, or just the, to be honest, just the value to I kind of wish it. I still had that pair of okay. Jordan ones. I think it's, that was a really cool shoe. Like, when I go talk shoe. to, when I go talk to, like, the high school, I remember I went to talk to, like, my old high school, and mm -hmm. I definitely wore the Air JLP. It's, like, a really special yeah. pair for me. I feel like in, maybe this is drawing it back to, like, putting the Presto over the Jordan 1 at the time, where it's, like, the Jordan 1... Uh, Off-White is such an iconic shoe, like the yeah. original one. Yeah. But there was also kind of, uh, it was such an obvious shoe at that time too, where it was like everyone who was a celebrity or had a ton of money, like that was the sneaker they wanted to buy to go yeah. wear in either the tunnel or at like a red carpet event or to like, for like their moment to show like they were a sneakerhead, mm -hmm. you know? So it like had like, it was kind of like the uh, predecessor to the Dior one a little bit where it's like, if like, kind of like, real sneaker heads or like non-celebrity sneaker heads really like the shoe it kind of got i wouldn't say ruined but yeah. like it was so inaccessible to anyone who was actually in the shoes because of the celebrity factor yeah. to it like we're i mean at least it came though before and i know you're kind of an anti-jordan one guy right now and this is not character no, yeah. this, you know I, I think pretty fair but like at least it came before yes. the jordan one got so yep. uh I, I don't know Ubiquitous. Yeah. Co opted is not yeah. like the right word, but you know, yeah, ubiquitous to the point where like you, you were just seeing Jordan 1s nonstop. This was before that whole wave, so I think it did occupy such a special place in that moment. And for that 10, we talk about the Presto and the Jordan 1, but I mean, I love the Zoom Fly from there. I mean, the Zoom I'm Fly a big was Zoom amazing. Fly guy. The, oh, I guess I had those too. I didn't, I, think I like I, the Vapor Max with the I big swoosh. I bought those on resale. Which, yeah. the, the Zoom Fly? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, and, and right away, the prices weren't so crazy on a lot of them. I think I got the Zoom Fly for like 350 I did like the Air Max 97 out of that pack. That was one of my personal favorites. White I know with the some, black swoosh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know some people don't like that shoe, especially because like it yellows so much, but I... Thought, they do yellow. Yeah. I have them at the desk, and they're all yellow. But you know what's cool about that? That kind of connects, and I've talked a lot about the Off-White Jordan 5 and how much I love that shoe. That kind of connects to the Off-White Jordan 5, mm -hmm. which comes pre-yellowed, and it's this thing of retro future of it looking like it's from the past, but from the future at the same time. Yes. I, I, I think there's a lot of design work that goes overlooked yeah. with things like that. Like even, you know, in, in talking about the, the Jordan 5, Paul Savavici worked on that shoe. He also yes. worked on former Jordan brand designer, yes. the, the Off-White Jordan 1, and he told me that when they first made the off-white Jordan 1, that the factory in Asia that, that was making the shoes for Nike, the, the managers at the factory were confused. They didn't, they didn't understand. They were like, they gave them the shoe and, and everybody on the Nike side and on the Jordan side was excited because they nailed it. And they were like, you want a shoe that looks like this? You want a shoe with exposed foam and the mm. stitching to look like this? Like they were confused at this idea. And that kind of shows you how different it was at the time or how much of a challenge it was to what a brand new Nike shoe should look like. And I think that's kind of what Virgil wanted to do. Yeah, it, it, one thing that like, I always look back on that stuff or especially like the moment of the 10, mm -hmm. you know, and it was like, I know Yeezy came before that, but like maybe Yeezy plus Off-White, it was like a real like demarcation line of like we're in a new era of 
sneaker hype in like a new era of sneaker heads, mm. right? Like that's like where it kind of like, I wouldn't say crossed like a threshold, but like it's a new thing now. You felt yeah. like, did you feel like it was just like young people or just more people in general? Like there was a new big thing It was thing so much for more like into. mainstream in mass. Cause we're like yeah. talking about it at this point, we're like, you know, talking about gel light threes beforehand, you know, right. and like that, there were a lot of hype gel light threes right. before. And obviously not as, I'm not gonna compare it to off-white or anything, but like those sort of shoes existed in an era that was like pre off-white X Nike. And then yeah. once it like went to that point, it went mass. And I guess like, that's the one thing I struggle with sometimes because I think Virgil is really thoughtful with the shoes that he creates. Yeah. But maybe sometimes the consumer of Off-White X Nike is like the least thoughtful sneaker consumer <laughs> out there. Okay. So to, to further that point, I think in 2021, we talked about the Yeezy 350. Yeah. And people, you know, he said he would never wear it probably ever again. And you see it uh, even in the Slack today. Someone said you see them nonstop. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, Wexler told us they wanted to make it a Roshi. Killer. Exactly. They wanted to yeah. replace the Nike Roshi run in yeah, terms of the Wex shoe you see at the airport all exactly. the time. Exactly. And, and here's what I would say. Similarly, the off-white, not this 10, yeah. but the way someone feels about getting a Yeezy 350 who has never had yeah. it, who's always wanted it, maybe it's not the Turtle Dove, maybe it's not the Pirate Black, but mm -hmm. it's a, a colorway, a, a recent colorway of the Yeezy 350. If you're not fully in, if you're not in sneaker media if you're not a rabid sneaker collector if you see the yeezy 350 and you're like oh i got this colorway it's, again it's not the pirate black yeah. or the turtle yeah. and you have it you think that you just got like the greatest like no, sneaker sure. of the, of the last five years and i will say and it might be and it might be but here's what i also i would say the off-white models that maybe you and i look yeah. at the 10 it's like oh the the one you always say the one with the turf uh yeah the one with the turf shoes on it and that, like you could have went into Kith and got them off the mm -hmm. shelf. Like I got them for a Christmas gift. Yeah. And the fact that it was an off-white collab, it was uh, to me so a, they had something special. A similar feeling as someone getting a no. Yeezy 350. That's something like to say that these two guys came from the same camp and like the both brand names, the off-white Nike, you would have thought like it was. The Presto, and it was like one of these models that came more recently. I got them like for Christmas gifts, and I got them because I knew that the person would appreciate them just by it being off white. Exactly. But I think that's what Whitley's saying. Like, yes. You're you're upset because exactly. like that's like the shortcut. Well, he's upset about it. I'm like, oh, this <laughs> no, is great. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not yeah. No, no, hold on. Yeah. It's not that. It was just my bad. I I, I don't no, want to characterize you like that. I every think time. we can all agree that like, and maybe it's changed a little bit, but there was like maybe like 2017, 2018, maybe even early 2019 there was like very clear an era of ex-celebrity who may not be that in the sneakers goes out and buys an off-white Jordan 1 because they want to get, you know, like reposted on a sneaker Instagram page like that. Or they, or it's like an NBA player who wants to get their sneaker reposted from being in the tunnel. It was just like, just throw the off-white ones on and like everyone's going to repost you. So at, mm -hmm. at that point, like, and I've always said this, it has nothing to do with just being off-white. I just get so tired of like the obvious sneaker choice out of out of the bunch where it's like it was never like oh i found the rare thing or this is the thing i'm really into like you see pj tucker break out all these rare and awesome mm -hmm. shoes and we all kind of geek out about it and it's like even though the off-white ones are rare by actual manufactured units yeah there's nothing rare about them as trying to flex them on the internet right it's like not if you have the money, I mean, that's kind of like it, just, it, it was. It was just a sign that yeah. I have over a thousand dollars. But but here's what I like about this. I think that I agree. Not everybody who buys them is necessarily that interested in the motivating factors for their design. But those things in the design sure. still exist and are still there. And even you, you know the, the balance of them. Or you know, Virgil has said, "I'm not a sneakerhead." He said, "Quote: It's important not to be precious, you know, about these things." I, you know, and, and I think there's something about the design that's very balanced, again, like the Off-White Jordan 5, where it is precious yeah. to an extent in that it's reverent of this iconic shoe, but it's also bold enough to make changes to them. So even, like I said, that first black Air Force One Off-White, it was a, a pair from, I think, December 2016 with the silver swoosh. Yeah. That shoe was made at Nike by Matt Kilgore, Bruce Kilgore, mm -hmm. the original Air Force oh, One yeah. designer's mm -hmm. son. Like, oh, there's, crazy. There's, there's all this history that is still in the shoe, even though they're doing crazy things to them and, and tearing them apart and things like that. So it's this balance of like, a, again, reverent, but not precious. And, and Virgil and I think his 2017 Harvard Graduate School of Design lecture, 
he said that one of his notes to Nike was that all, it looks like all their shoes come out of a microwave. They're so perfect mm. when they come out. So it's like, how can you balance having a new product that's perfect with something that's worn or something that's loved? Because again, he comes from this, I think, if I can paraphrase, you know, his view on shoes of like, they should be worn or they should be mm -hmm. loved and not treated as trophies, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Few, few random off-white sneakers that I kind of like uh, from, I mean, how many has he done at this point? <laughs> 48 maybe? Yeah. According to our post? I mean, all the colorways and things like yeah. that. I mean, you, you lose track. A few random ones that I thought like stuck out to me over the years that may not be like mm -hmm. the bigger ones. Really like those uh, Serena 97s. Love those. I remember you rank, you rated those very high. I was a little yeah. surprised those. by that. Yeah. Because yeah, it's such a random, not a, I wouldn't say it's random. When they came out, they were hype. But like it maybe gets lost a little bit in the shuffle of like I love those. the pantheon of yeah. Virgil. Of all the, all the off-white Nikes. Yeah, you're almost like, oh so shit, many. you totally forget. Not totally forget, mm -hmm. but like you're like, oh, he did a mm -hmm. whole Serena collection as well. Because it's just a, like another accolade to his Nike resume. Yeah. But Although, let's not forget that <laughs> Serena did call him Virgil Abdul. <laughs> I, I think it was Abdullah. Abdul, yeah. Virgil yeah. Abdullah. And it like... It made you think, did, did Serena actually know anything about these shoes before? Does she know anything about but, it? <laughs> but that said, I thought her, the 97s that he made for her were awesome. awesome. Yeah. And I randomly like those tan and orange Air Max 90s. I like those too. I like tan those too. orange Air Max. They came out with the black and white ones. Oh, okay. That was around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the ones you're talking about. But those were good. Because it was like something, to me, I like it because it's, it almost, it's like, uh, it diverges from what you would expect an off-white sneaker to look like. Yeah, and because that's the thing, even though I do appreciate this equation that I, I tried to break down, like the equation is very familiar at this point. So I think they have to refresh it sometimes or they have to find new ways to do it. Like like they did, in my opinion, on the off-white Jordan 5 last year. I think sometimes they do it and they miss. Like, remember the mercurial yeah. zoom fly, yeah. flying it that looked like a clown shoe, the orange yeah. with like the polka dots mm. on it, like and, that. And it, it's tough too because, you know, at the beginning, the Virgil stuff like felt so special, like it was something new. Yeah. But now it's just the most like obvious sort of looking, uh, it's just- It's a formula. Well, not even just the Nike stuff, you know, it's like he has the, off, the actual off-white shoes. He has the Louis Vuitton stuff. He yeah. has this where his de design language is everywhere, but then also every single fake sneaker out there has is kind of like recreated this sort of, Design. Speaking of, of Malaysia, I never forget yeah. all the fake off-white yeah. Nikes yeah. in Malaysia. What did we buy a pair of off-white Nike Air Max 98s? Yes. Oh, wow. We yeah. wanted yeah. to get a pair of fake off-white field disruptors. Yeah. What about <laughs> the, the fake Yeezys that said off-white on them or something like <laughs> yeah. that? That's what I mean. It's like yeah. Yeezy X off-white is like was the, created the new sneaker culture. And, you know, it's just become what everything's about. So maybe if you like have been into sneakers a little bit longer, maybe you're just like, a, not like weary, but you just like want to see something new at this point. I, I get that, but what I would say is that the Off-White 5 was only a year ago. Yeah. Sneaker of the Year, our Sneaker of the Year book. Yeah, and I thought it was great too. Just the other thing, the one that I love, the MCA Air Force One, that was yeah. recent. These yellow Air Force Ones. The Complex are, Con Air Force Ones, the MoMA Air Force the Ones. The MoMA Air incredible. Force One, we have that number three on our list. Yeah. The MoMA Air Force One is still like to be honest. It, it, I don't know if it's those like are big. if if it's recent bias. Yeah. Those MCA Air Force Ones in blue and the MoMA ones, those are like not on a grail list for me, but that's like uh, I'm looking for them nonstop to see if the price drops. And, and, and the, even just like think about what he did there, where these are sneakers that are released in collaboration with the museum, and and even that just as an act is putting the sneaker as an object on a different level, and it's kind of a fulfillment of. In, in the first mm -hmm. Nike press release announcing the 10, the Off-White collection, he said, quote, to me, they are on the same level as a sculpture of David or the Mona Lisa. So there, there's even some foreshadowing back then of, of what these things could become. And now Virgil's releasing these things, you know, Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago or MoMA with those Air Force Ones. I, I love those pairs. And the yellow one looks a little bit like them. They look great. And the, the yellow ones look great too. But, but his consistency to do it over and over. We all know that the sneaker consumer and the the sneaker listener is finicky yeah. and he has he's done, done a lot of sneakers he's done women's women's product yeah. he's the done consistency is there the women's air jordan fours which the air I'm jordan not, I'm fours not even, i'm not even saying i forgot about the yeah, air jordan such a big fours. shoe yeah i mean uh, those are great like jordan ford that may or may not come out this year i need those the black and gray come those. on yeah 
And that's the thing, his consistency to do it over and over. Again, that 2017 seems like 10 years ago, but he every year he's had he's been in the conversation mm -hmm. heavily and mm -hmm. like a top of the conversation. I, I don't think I was big on those fours at first because you're just like, oh, the it's women's a, Jordan four. Yeah, because you're just like, it, it's just another, you know, it's another off-white Jordan, yeah. whatever. But I think that those ones have aged Massive pretty shoe. well. Massive shoe. I think those things are going to have such a huge imprint too on the next generation of creative people coming up because to them, these off-white sneakers are like to us what maybe an SB Dunk was or something yeah. like that. You think about these kind of eras of big, important sneakerhead mm -hmm. yeah. sneakers and they're the next ones. And I think Virgil, again, is like very intentional in, in that regard where if you think about, Joe, you mentioned the, the Nike launch event for the mm -hmm. 10 in the fall of 2017 at 23 Wall Street. They had all these programs and all these panels and things like that, very educational things to yes. kind of introduce the crowd there to the people who are really pulling the strings in the sneaker industry and people who really create these things and workshops to let you make your own shoes like that. That is a big part of this vessel that he has in these sneakers. I mean, even in December 2019, he said the ultimate idea was all the extra laces and the zip ties to go with, you know, you use those to make your other shoes like DIY mm -hmm. off white sneakers. So again, this thing of doing it yourself and that kind of ties back to taking a shoe and, and making it your own and exposing the foam and, and things like that, you know. He, he wanted you to be able to make these things on your own by just using things for, from, a, from a hardware store. Didn't, well, didn't one of your friends make their own pair of MCA Air Force Ones? Yes, my friend Larry, uh, Armenian Kicks yeah. on uh, Instagram, he took a, I forget what it was, just some Foot Locker Air Force One in like spray paint it, like the mcas yeah. i think he spray painted it himself and put the silver swoosh on it and like put a fake tag on it and virgil was actually like he applauded it yeah yes. that's yes. exactly that was yes. like a moment that's, like that's when that had happened remember that's the that. assignment you know what i mean yeah. to, to be able to give people the tools to think this way or make these things but even say, that, yeah go ahead. i was gonna say no the one of the funnier things that people discussed that first that's kind of become a footnote at this point was are you actually going to wear the shoes with the zip tie on them? The zip tie. I was just going to say, think about how recognizable the zip tie yeah. has become. Like, I remember doing sneaker shopping episodes around that time, and, like, the celebrities would be like, do I, do I keep it on? Do I, they would like, ask you, like, yes, for Yes, like, <laughs> and everyone tips. had a different take on it, but the zip tie became such a thing, and I think it's another one of, like, even if you didn't know the shoes that well, sometimes you would tell, like, people who may not be in the... Yeah. In it, be like, oh, wait, uh, I think I saw, uh, are those are shoes with a zip tie on it. And there was a, a friend of the program who I'm not, not going to name. I, I know who you're talking about already. Uh, but he had gone to, I think it was like a Foot Locker event or something. I think it was a 21 Mercer event. Yes, 21 event. Mercer event. And they yeah. were giving out white on white Air Force Ones that had a zip tie on them. And I don't and, know and if Prestos, they were. White Prestos and white Air Force Ones. Really? And I don't know if they were, and I don't know if they were like official or whatever. And the person at the time didn't, I don't know if they realized the importance of it, but they snipped the the zip tie off of the shoe so at that point it literally just became a pair of white on white air force they, they were slightly I different so I this never... is a this is a really like you said a very much a footnote in virgil's big body of nike work but there was this 21 mercer event or nike lab if you will the the nike store mm -hmm. in downtown in soho and the shoes were like what they said white on white air force ones and i think yeah. white on white prestos as well but in addition to the zip tie i think on the medial side they also had printed that text okay. that's, Virgil Abloh, CEO Off-White, Nike okay. Beaverton, Oregon. So there is a little bit to distinguish them, but I do remember this person cutting the zip tie off, and that pair looks quite Ooh, like a regular. <laughs> you got to tell me after. <laughs> quite like a regular it Air was, Force it, One. It so. was a bunch of display shoes, though, right? I don't know if they had them on display or not, but they, they were hard to get, and I don't, okay. I don't think those things popped up too often at this point. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could sell the zip tie separately or something. I, I took the zip tie off my off-white Jordan 5s. Did Joe, are you keeping the zip okay, tie Okay, so I took it off, but I keep it. I, I don't you cut keep it. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, take it off, I take it off the lace, but I don't cut it because uh, you never know. There was a moment, too, and I remember we had a discussion about this oh in the office. You know the discussion go. he's talking no, about? No, but I could tell when he gets excited, it's going no, yeah. to no, come back to something we disagreed on. But no, ahead, there, was a, there was a moment where I remember coming to the office and uh, hearing a talk on a podcast about zip ties, about oh. the off-white zip ties, where uh, Joe Rogan had done a bit on his no. podcast, and it was funny. And I, I was no like, and I was like, oh, this is hilarious. We should post it. And you're like, it's not funny. You're like, you're the only person who thinks it's funny. Well, you tend to over exaggerate anyways, some things on podcasts. Like, anyways, the the the, the the 
we ended up writing a story about it. Oh. The headline was, he goes, if you, I think Joe said, if you want to write the, the story. If you He's wanna, right, though. If he you was want, right. If you want to write the story, Joe goes, if you want to write the story, do it yourself. He was and right. And I go, okay. And I, made, I didn't say do it yourself. I don't talk like that. Do it yourself, like Virgil Abloh. I don't, Gave yes, him the tools. Gave me the tools like to do it. To him, I'm just like, if you want to do it, just, just do it. To his credit, there we let go. me guess Nike. how this ends. It was the number one traffic. But the headline was, Joe Rogan <laughs> thinks off-white Nike sneakers are a conspiracy to make kids dumb, which is absurd. And I think the story okay, did so like a half a million views on the we website. Go. I remember him being like, I remember the traffic report, and I go, all right, you were right. Like, did, I have did no he, did problem. Did he glow but, at all? Or but did you... time out. Me saying, oh, if you're going to do it, do it yourself. Maybe, maybe, I maybe, don't maybe, talk maybe, like that. Maybe it's just like <laughs> how I, uh, this, this, yes, it's, it's the how internal you, of how I yes, because no, process it. I probably said like, dude, that's not that funny. But, like, if you're going to do it, do it yourself. I do remember the next day you being, like, seeing the traffic report. And I was like, bro, you were right. You were right. That headline, though, that, a master class in headline writing. <laughs> but I remember that. You're right. All right. Props to you. So, so Joe Rogan saying take the zip tie off. Well, just imagine being a parent. Joe Rogan, like, aside, just being a parent. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we got it. No, okay. just imagine, like, just being, you know, a parent, you know, like, a, yeah. just a regular guy in his 50s who has, like, a 12-year-old kid or whatever or who's, like, <laughs> wants these shoes. and you, But someone who never grew up, like, in the sneakers or yeah. whatever, and their yeah. kid wants the shoes with the zip ties on it. It must be, like, a clear sign of, like, a generational gap between the two of you. Your kid wants $500 sneakers with zip ties on them. Yeah, but There's I've so also seen a lot it. of people be like, I love the zip tie. Yeah, I'm not yeah. hating on it. I'm yeah. just saying like you must like be, it must be viewed as like something that you know. I'm out of touch. Yeah, yeah. Not Makes me, sense. The, the, the yeah. hypothetical father. Yeah, which I will never be the out of touch. But father. but I keep bringing it up. He did I think 48 or so at this point. He has another 50 on the way. Up until this point though, his batting average is really good. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. I yeah, think there's like, some misses in there. There's some there definitely. There's definitely some product bad. in there where it, it was probably like, and I don't have the answer to this, but Nike probably wanted him to help push certain a new model. Yeah, initiatives in thing like I mean I know we had mentioned it previously. He had done a bunch of like World Cup, yeah, you know, uh, merchandise or whatever um, that didn't hit the same, but yeah, yeah. I mean I think I just, would say overall though like pretty solid. And yeah. the ten is aged. Yeah, amazing. People, I think remember so. people balling in the hyperdunks? I think Draymond yes. Green Draymond wore them. Green. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Converse Chuck Taylor, we had Paul Middleman on this yes. podcast talking about how yes. difficult that sneaker was to do. And again, I think that understanding how hard some of these shoes were to make or what yes. they were like on a factory level or a production level shows you, you, you know, people, people want to criticize the design approach or how it's not that interesting. But the people who are actually physically producing these shoes will tell mm -hmm. you that there is a lot going on, you know? And, and even, I know people are sick of things in quotes, but to me, that's such a cool interpretation of it's Nike's great. design history. You know, you think about visible technology and how big that's been for Nike, getting consumers to understand what's going on inside of a sneaker, whether it's through showing the air or, or calling a sneaker an Air Jordan, you know, Air Max sneakers where you can visibly see the air. And to me, what Virgil has done on these is an extension of that, you know, mm -hmm. literally just naming it on the shoe. So. I mean, Joe Rogan, no offense, but I, I feel like there's a lot more going on here than just the zip ties. And one thing I would say that Virgil captured when he was doing those events, not to sound corny, but like, I, I could picture him on a flight designing over WhatsApp. Yeah. Like he always used yeah, to say, he said like, that, yeah. and he really did a good job of articulating that, that those busy design months and years, and then, you know, going to probably Portland and overseas and things like that, and like him just designing off the WhatsApp. I just don't know how he does it all. You, yeah. Well, like, that was the, that's the thing. You really felt that. You felt efficiency. it like those weeks. You felt those weeks and and like the 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 months of crunch time. Like he did a really good job explaining it. And like you definitely believe like oh we have to change this and we have to do this and I'm flying all over and I'm DJing mm -hmm. here and I'm D and and that's another thing that I think may go a little unnoticed with with this yeah. first group of ten. But he was like. Because he has Jack of all trades, all these jobs, yeah. you know. I mean, and, I mean, and I don't want to understate too. Obviously, these are Virgil's ideas and Virgil's creations, but also the also there's a there's, team behind it too. Yeah, huge yes. teams at Nike of men and women who are spending a lot of time figuring out how to articulate these design ideas. You know, I think that's why he can maybe have like a a short period of input. You know, there's one quote he said. Most of the creative decisions were made in the first three hours, where actual design and iteration took two to three days. He said the Jordan One was done in one design session. You know what I mean? But I'm sure it took much more than that well, in terms of Nike. I think that you know, because you hear the story about the Off White One and him, you know, like tinkering with it yeah. all the way through. But I think he's also 
been pretty clear with his whole sort of design ethos is just just do it and move on. You right. know, where mm -hmm. it's like even though he did go back and revisit it, it's like he just has so much going on where he's like, it's probably just sit down over like a tech session or whatever. I mean, yeah. I don't know. And then you come to an answer at the end of the session and yeah. that's the work and it's done, you know? And I think there's so much more to do too. Like yes. the, the work on each individual sneaker is done quite quickly, but the the overall arc of this thing is, is so big. You know, he was tweeting in April, 2020 saying, what Nike genres yes. of sports are we forgetting? You know, he's saying, there's a blank sheet of paper in front of me. What Nike zone should I do next? So he's yeah. clearly already in that mode of like, we're not anywhere near finished or we have a lot of un, untapped territory to, to, to turn into off-white sneakers. You know what I mean? You know what would be interesting, which is the total counter to his 50, if he did one like Jordan or archival Nike a year. For mm. like, that, that would be interesting. I, I think it He's would be interesting, but I think the way collaborations work now and, and how they're it's more cool. mass, like it just, it's that model is outdated. You know what I mean? This this model that Virgil has been a part of and that Kanye yeah. West has been a part of is like something where they are bigger and more prolific. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. And also, um, this like predates Travis on on Nike too, where it's like, not has like Travis like replaced Virgil because I think they play in two very different spaces, but like yeah. what do you think the kids are like more hyped on at this point, you know? It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Um, I mean, I think the Travis stuff still has a lot of newness to it, especially because there aren't as many Travis Scott sneakers releasing as there are yeah. off-white sneakers. I mean, we talk a lot at times about how many Travis Scott shoes and how it feels like there's a new Travis Scott shoe yeah. every six months, but mm -hmm. I, I still think they pale in comparison to how frequent the Nike off-white releases. Yeah, so I think has, because of that, there's still like more luster on the Travis Scott ones right now. And I think Travis has a group of sneakers yeah. and Virgil has a catalog of yeah. sneakers. How many of the 50 dunks are you gonna try and get? I haven't seen them. I mean, I'm gonna try to get the black ones for okay. sure. And Black with the silver swoosh, right? Black and silver swoosh. Yeah. I'm interested to see the rollout, what it's like. Yeah. I have two questions, though, before we go. Okay. Do you think there'll ever be one collaborator like Virgil who gets to do a whole Jordan line? So right now it would be 1 to 35. I could see it happening. I mean, th this, this kind of changed, you know, this and Kanye at Adidas kind of changed everything. And yes. It, yeah. it, it's funny, too. You know, you mentioned earlier, but... This is, in a way, the fulfillment of what Kanye West, I think, wanted to do with Nike. Mm -hmm. So so I think that Nike is a lot more, I don't want to say generous, because that makes it sound like these collaborators didn't earn the opportunity, mm -hmm. but Nike is a lot more willing now to give that kind of Runway, freedom yeah. uh, to, to their collaborators. So I think it's possible. Yeah, I mean, obviously, everyone knows Virgil, long time, like Kanye's like creative director mm -hmm. or whatever yeah. his title was there. So, I mean, there's a lot of that like bleeding over into his work. You know? Yeah. And then the next thing I would say is you get that call or that email from Nike PR and they're like, hey, come to 21 Mercer and you could pick one off-white Nike shoe that you don't have tomorrow. What is it? Oh, man. I think I would go back and repick the, the Presto. Yeah. To resell it? <laughs> no. I'm, no, to own. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I guess. Presto? Yeah. yeah. I think... Maybe the maybe the black, maybe the MoMA Air Force Ones. I, I, the MoMA Air Force One is quite high up there to me, especially because it looks just like that original Matt Kilgore design black Air Force One with the silver swoosh on it. So th oh. that, that, that connection there is, is really cool. You know what, I'm, I'm, look, I'm thinking back on it and like this is a moment of regret because we had gone to a Nike press, or I had gone to like a Nike press preview mm -hmm. in like 2018 maybe. Okay. Um, and I think you may have gone as well. Um, and they were kind of like, hey, just pick out, like, just let us know what you want and you can pick it out from the things. And they're like, and I, they're like, obviously you don't want to be too greedy or mm -hmm. anything. And I think I had gotten the Para Air Max ones and then the undercover element, uh, React 87s. Okay. And but like the, the Serena's 97s were there they as were right well. There. That's your right there, and sneaker. I didn't. And I, and I didn't know that was wealthy. That's is that your favorite off white? It's a good one. I think it's. I think it's up there. For some reason, I, I just. No I just really like that shoe. The colors and, are amazing. And it's I, like... I love the white one, but I also hate the other two 97s. Okay. Uh, the black one, and then like the Menta yeah. gray one. I think those shoes never needed to be 
He's yeah. always got to balance it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love uh, it. I love can't it. Can't be I hate too it. positive. Can't be too positive. The one for me would be there's two, but if I had to pick, probably the MCA Air Force One, and if not, close second, depending on the day. MoMA Air Force One for didn't, sure. Didn't MoMA Air Force One come with like special socks or something? There's a, like there's a matching set of socks. I think it's maybe a Nike Elite sock. Check stock XC, I what they're going so. for right yeah. now. What do you think they're going for? Two grand? What, the socks? No. <laughs> the MoMA Air Force Ones? The yeah. whole package? Those shoes are like $15,000. Like $15, well, this shows, 15, you, this okay. shows you that. This is like, you know what this is like, Joe? This is the, the last test. sale was 1300 This is the test for like a politician. 1300 when they asked them how the much a gallon of milk is or... The, the, the ask for a size 13, 19 grand, 12, 9 grand. So you were right. The last sale. I think they're like in, over 10. Yeah, the last sale in my size was 1,300. Who knows when that was? But so yeah. you're saying it's not happening? <laughs> not happening. The price of, Grossly oh, underestimated. What the, what the price of a Brooklyn a, a house was or whatever <laughs> yeah, recently? Yeah, for the New York City so mayoral candidates. I know we, we've seen these sort of uh, big collections before. Pharrell did it with the Adidas Superstar mm -hmm. um, when he first came out. Even, well, speaking, this wasn't the only Gel Light 3 recently that was popular because Ronnie did that mm -hmm. sort of, a, yeah. you know, the super... Huge pack of Gel which, Light But threes. I think the shoes were pretty limited, you yeah. know, and there were a lot of colorways, not a lot of stock for each model. I mean, I could be wrong on that, yeah. but how do we envision this thing rolling out? Do, like, 50 pairs hit I sneakers no at idea. once? Like, I have no idea. I, I don't like to... I always say this, I don't like to guess because I don't like to speculate because that uh, gives me the opportunity to be, to be wrong in the future. So I'm... I have no idea. Him and I were talking about that too. I almost feel like in, like I'm say I'm not going to say this is what it's going to be or whatever. This is you just throwing yeah, shoot, it out. Yeah, shoot, so we know, shooting disclaimer. From, shooting from the hip. Okay. Because um, okay. I remember going on that, like the Kith one. Um, and when... The when they released all those Jell-Lite. Yeah, releases. and it was like... when. All the shoes dropped at once. Maybe it like leveled the playing field a little bit mm. because it was like it's so much. A lot of different. How many released at one time? It was quite a bit. Yeah, I think it was like over thirty pairs or something like that. Yeah. But there's just so much chaos on it that it's like picking the sizes and whatnot. But obviously, Nike releases are much different. Yeah, it's gonna be we'll a fun see. time. Definitely gonna be a fun time. Something to look forward to. Probably gonna be tough to get, but I'm interested to see like exactly what colors. That black one that leaked, definitely have my eye on. Are you more excited for these than the previous Virgil Dunks? No, I like, from, well, we'll see because so everything. Far, so, so far, so far, like, like the Michigan ones and the, uh, the UNLV ones. Yeah, 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 those, same. Those seem more my speed right now, but we'll see. Who knows, in a couple months when they release or a couple, whenever they come out, we'll see how I feel. All right, so 50 Dunks on the way. It was a good retrospect today. Off-white Nike, obviously not going anywhere. A gang of shoes releasing this summer or this fall, we'll see. So that was the Complex Sneakers Podcast. Before we go, the Complex Sneakers Podcast dad hats are now available online. Oh, we yeah, will put important. the link Can I see one? in the description. Are these going to fit on my head? Yeah, Because I want the, I want the, Look, try I don't it on. I want people to buy them if, you know. See, I want the large-headed people in our audience to know whether or not this hat is going to be appropriate great. for them. Yeah. Let me know if it fits great on me. Uh, oh, yeah, that looks good. Uh, it looks good. It looks great. <laughs> From this angle, yeah. it looks good. The Complex Sneakers Podcast Dad Hats, available now. We will put the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. We will see you next week.